When the West is unable to control an African leader, their strategy often involves using another African leader, typically one they have purchased, against the leader they despise. They manipulate the purchased leader to place blame on the leader they couldn't buy, aiming to portray them as unfit for Africa through false accusations. However, the truth cannot be concealed. In the case of Ghana's president accusing Burkina Faso of terrorism, the leader of Burkina Faso provided evidence of their innocence and revealed the reality. The question arises, why did Ghana's president align himself with the West? During the U.S. African Leader Summit, Ghana's president, Nana Akufo-Addo, asserted that Burkina Faso's military administration had formed an alliance with Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group. Akufo-Addo claimed that these mercenaries were enlisted to counterinsurgency activities within Burkina Faso's borders. The situation intensified when he further alleged that, in exchange for their services, a portion of Burkina Faso's southern territory had been allocated to Russia. These weighty allegations became the focal point of diplomatic tension between Burkina Faso and Ghana, prompting a strong denial from Burkina Faso's military leader, Ibrahim Traor. In a recent interview, Ibrahim Traor resolutely denied the accusations, emphasizing their lack of factual basis and portraying them as false. Traor's unwavering dedication to safeguarding Burkina Faso's reputation against what he considers baseless allegations is evident in his firm response. The international community closely monitors the evolving situation between Ghana and Burkina Faso. The allegations of an association with Russian mercenaries have sparked widespread concern and speculation. Various nations and global organizations have expressed interest in the matter, calling for a thorough investigation to uncover the truth behind the claims. Traor's strong denial has added complexity to the situation, heightening the conspiracy surrounding the issue. Not only has Ghana's president Okufo Addo made serious allegations against Burkina Faso, but he has also presented what he claims to be evidence supporting these accusations. While the specific details of the evidence have not been made public, President Akufo Addo has hinted at the involvement of intelligence reports and testimonies suggesting a connection between Burkina Faso and Russian mercenaries. However, the nature and credibility of this evidence have faced scrutiny, with critics questioning its solid foundation for the allegations. The international community is eagerly awaiting further clarification and a more detailed presentation of the evidence to assess its validity and relevance to the accusations against Burkina Faso. Regarding Russia's reaction, the allegations of Burkina Faso's association with Russian mercenaries have inevitably drawn Russia into the diplomatic spotlight. Russia has vehemently denied any involvement in the situation distancing itself from the accusations made by Ghana's president. The Russian government issued an official statement expressing surprise and disappointment, dismissing the allegations as baseless and lacking factual foundation. Russia has called for a fair and impartial investigation, emphasizing the importance of relying on concrete evidence before drawing conclusions. These allegations against Burkina Faso and its military leader, Ibrahim Traor, have had repercussions beyond Ghana's borders, affecting the country's relations with other African nations. Some neighboring countries have expressed concern over the allegations and called for a peaceful resolution, urging a thorough investigation to determine the truth. The situation has also prompted a cautious approach from other African nations in their interactions with Burkina Faso. Diplomatic ties may be strained as countries await the outcome of the investigation before making firm commitments or taking a definitive stance on the matter. Within Ghana, the allegations against Burkina Faso have significantly impacted the political landscape. President Akufo Addo's decision to publicly accuse Burkina Faso of involvement with Russian mercenaries has sparked debates and discussions among the political elite and the general public. Supporters commend the president's boldness in addressing national security while critics question the timing and motives behind the accusations. The internal political discourse has become polarized, with various factions expressing divergent views on the credibility of the allegations 
and the necessity of a thorough investigation. In response to the allegations, Burkina Faso has taken proactive steps to address the situation and mitigate potential damage to its reputation. Alongside Ibrahim Traw's public denial, Burkina Faso has expressed its willingness to fully cooperate with any international investigation that may be initiated. Additionally, the government has invited representatives from Ghana and other concerned nations to engage in diplomatic talks to resolve the issue, emphasizing Burkina Faso's commitment to addressing the allegations through dialogue and cooperation instead of allowing tensions to escalate further. The allegations of Burkina Faso's association with Russian mercenaries carry significant implications for regional security in West Africa. The situation has heightened concerns among neighboring countries about the potential involvement of external actors in the region's internal affairs. The need for stability and security in West Africa is of utmost importance, and the allegations made could prompt regional organizations and coalitions to re-evaluate their security strategies and cooperation mechanisms. The outcome of the investigations and subsequent diplomatic resolutions will likely shape regional security dynamics in the foreseeable future. Media coverage has played a significant role in shaping public perception of the allegations against Burkina Faso. Extensive reporting and analysis by both local and international media have disseminated information and perspectives on the matter. Public opinion has been influenced by the tone and framing of news stories, with some outlets emphasizing the need for a thorough investigation while others speculate on the potential geopolitical implications of the allegations. The media's role in shaping public discourse highlights the importance of responsible reporting during times of diplomatic tension and international scrutiny. To understand the allegations made by Ghana's president, it is important to note that during the US African Leader Summit, President Mana Akufo Addo claimed that Burkina Faso's military administration had employed Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group. According to his assertions, these mercenaries were enlisted to assist in combating insurgency within Burkina Faso's borders. Akufo Addo further alleged that, as compensation for their services, a portion of Burkina Faso's southern territory had been allocated to Russia. These specific claims became the basis for the diplomatic tension between Burkina Faso and Ghana leading to a strong denial from Burkina Faso's military leader, Ibrahim Traw. Ibrahim Traw, the military leader of Burkina Faso, vehemently rejected the allegations made by Ghana's president. In a press conference, Traw categorically denied any involvement with Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group. He questioned the credibility of the evidence presented by Ghana and emphasized Burkina Faso's commitment to handling its internal security matters without relying on external military support. Additionally, Traw raised concerns about the timing and motives behind President Akufo Addo's accusations, suggesting that they might be politically motivated to tarnish Burkina Faso's international image. These counterarguments by Burkina Faso highlight the complexities of the diplomatic dispute and the differing perspectives on the nature of the alleged Russian mercenary organization implicated in the accusations. In response to the claims made by Ghana's president, the Wagner Group categorically denied any involvement in Burkina Faso's internal affairs. They stated that they have not been contracted or engaged by the Burkina Faso military administration. The Wagner Group expressed surprise at being dragged into the diplomatic dispute and asserted that they operate within the bounds of international law, refraining from engaging in activities that violate the sovereignty of nations. This denial adds another layer of complexity to the situation, raising questions about the integrity of the evidence presented by Ghana and the accuracy of the allegations against Burkina Faso and the Wagner Group. This indicates that Ghana's president is solely blaming Burkina Faso. However, it is necessary to address a few more aspects to gain a better understanding of the situation. How have other African nations responded to the allegations, and what role do regional alliances play in shaping their positions? The allegations against Burkina Faso have elicited diverse responses from other African nations, 
reflecting their regional alliances and diplomatic considerations. Some countries have shown solidarity with Ghana, emphasizing the importance of a thorough investigation to uncover the truth. These nations argue that any external interference in the internal affairs of a sovereign state should be carefully examined to preserve regional stability. On the other hand, some African nations have adopted a more cautious approach, refraining from making hasty judgments and calling for a diplomatic resolution. Regional alliances formed through organizations like the African Union can influence the positions of these nations, with considerations of regional stability and diplomatic harmony guiding their responses. What do other significant nations think about this matter? Following Ibrahim Tro's mention of partnerships with Turkey and China, both nations have responded cautiously to avoid further escalation of the diplomatic dispute. While acknowledging their collaboration with Burkina Faso in the fight against terrorism, Turkey and China have emphasized the importance of a fair and impartial investigation into the allegations. Their responses indicate a commitment to diplomatic norms and the need for a transparent resolution. By neither outright dismissing nor confirming the collaborations mentioned by Tror, these nations maintain a balanced stance that encourages dialogue while safeguarding their international reputations. Burkina Faso's partnerships with Turkey and China impact its relations with other nations in the West African region. The collaborations in the fight against terrorism are viewed positively by some countries that prioritize regional stability and counter-terrorism efforts. Burkina Faso's engagement with Turkey and China aligns with broader regional and global security objectives, particularly in combating terrorism. Collaborations with these nations demonstrate a commitment to addressing shared security challenges through international cooperation. The implications for the fight against terrorism involve the potential exchange of expertise, intelligence sharing, and joint efforts to counter extremist threats. However, the ongoing diplomatic dispute may introduce challenges to this cooperation, necessitating careful navigation to ensure that broader security objectives are not compromised. Returning to the question of whether Ghana's president is lying, we must examine why he might be doing so. The answer to this complex inquiry suggests a narrative that portrays the president as a puppet controlled by the West. This assertion gains traction because various experts have provided evidence supporting this claim. The alleged control exerted by the West over Ghana's president raises significant concerns about the autonomy and decision-making capabilities of the nation's leader. This suggests that the president's actions and statements may not necessarily reflect the genuine interests and aspirations of the Ghanaian people, but rather serve the agenda of external forces. The president's purported declaration during the U.S.-African Leaders' Summit supports this narrative, adding a layer of suspicion regarding potential influence from the United States. The question arises as to whether the president's statements resulted from external pressure or if underlying motives led to such a proclamation. Examining the dynamics of the U.S.-African Leaders' Summit provides insights into the potential influence on Ghana's president. The summit convenes African leaders in a diplomatic forum to discuss various issues, including economic cooperation, regional security, and political stability. It also provides an opportunity for external powers, such as the United States, to exert influence on the participating nations. This raises the question of whether the president felt compelled to align his statements with the interests of the West due to the dynamics of the summit. The influence exerted in such diplomatic settings is a subject of debate as leaders strive to balance national interests with external expectations. In this context, the suggestion that Ghana's president is a puppet implies vulnerability to external pressures that may compromise the nation's sovereignty. The timing of the president's statement at the US-African Leaders' Summit adds another layer of complexity. The assertion that Burkina Faso's leader is deliberately portrayed negatively on the international stage raises the question of motive. Why would external forces, particularly the West, be interested in undermining the image of Burkina Faso's leader? 
Burkina Faso's leaders' prioritization of Africa's interests over compliance with Western expectations has allegedly led to a dislike from the West, prompting them to influence Ghana's president to blame Burkina Faso. To understand the roots of this alleged discord, it becomes crucial to examine the leaders' track record regarding policies, decisions, and diplomatic stances. Identifying concrete instances where Burkina Faso's leader opposed Western interests provides a basis for evaluating the credibility of these claims. Now, let's address the basic question. Why has Ghana's president made all these claims? In international relations, the responsibility of leaders, especially presidents, is immense. Accusations of terrorism against a nation carry significant weight and can have far-reaching consequences. The recent incident involving the president of Ghana, accusing Burkina Faso of terrorism without substantial evidence, has sparked a debate on the professionalism and ethical considerations of such statements. The controversy began when Ghana's president made a public statement accusing Burkina Faso of engaging in terrorist activities. The statement, made under apparent pressure from Western nations, raises concerns about the credibility and professionalism of such accusations. Accusing a nation of terrorism without concrete evidence damages diplomatic relations and puts the accused country in a precarious position internationally. The accusations of terrorism are serious charges that can have severe repercussions for a nation's reputation and security. Without solid evidence, such accusations strain diplomatic ties and erode the trust that nations place in each other. Leaders must exercise caution and responsibility when making public statements that affect global relations. The influence of Western nations on the actions of leaders in other parts of the world has been a recurring theme in international relations. Burkina Faso's leader responded firmly to the accusations, emphasizing the importance of truth and cautioning Ghana against making baseless allegations in the future. This response underscores the seriousness of the situation and the need for leaders to uphold honesty and integrity in international discourse. Burkina Faso's leader stressed the significance of evidence in diplomatic relations, highlighting the necessity of a careful and measured approach to such sensitive matters. Accusing a nation of terrorism without evidence holds severe consequences that extend beyond diplomatic tensions. In extreme cases, it can result in economic sanctions, isolation, and even military intervention. The international community must exercise caution when accepting unverified claims, as the repercussions can be dire. Leaders bear the responsibility of ensuring their statements are grounded in truth and supported by credible evidence to avoid destabilizing global relations. Leadership entails a responsibility to act responsibly and ethically, especially in matters of international significance. As for your question about the West controlling these nations, it is important to recognize that each country's relationship with the West varies and is shaped by a multitude of factors. While some African leaders may align with Western powers, others may choose to pursue independent paths or cooperate with different regional or international actors. The decisions and actions of African leaders are influenced by various considerations, including their own national interests, historical contexts, and geopolitical dynamics. It is crucial to approach these topics with nuance and avoid making sweeping generalizations.